So now there's this list of places where women surveyed refuse to go on first dates. I don't care so hard right now. First of all, what is this list? Well, there are bad places for dates and this list definitely includes them. Who is taking someone to the gym or church on a first date? How is that a good place for conversation? And movies? You sat next to each other the whole time saying nothing. But it also includes some things which are totally fine and work for many people, like coffee or bowling. At least there, there's the chance to talk and be playful. But what this list really is, is value signaling. It's like virtue signaling, but something that women do in front of their friends. And there's a ton of videos on social media of women saying they want a guy who's over six foot tall, who makes over $100,000 per year, and other such nonsense. Daphne and I actually have a point system for height, so... A point system? Yeah. yeah. Huh. So when you're, when you're looking at your like prospects, if they're at like six foot and above, every single inch over six foot is an extra point. So it's like if you have a red flag, but you're six two, the red flag is canceled out. Because you have two oh. points. And if you're a short king, you gotta have like extra green flags, yeah. you know what I mean? the most a man should spend on a first date? I feel like if I'm gonna get ready and I'm gonna use all my products to come out with you, I need like a minimum of $200. A minimum, and that's like being nice. A 10, but he has an Android phone. What's his new rating? A three. That's a zero. That's horrible. It's a zero. Our pictures for Instagram are gonna be terrible. It's and in response, there's also a calculator invented based on US statistics to explain the likelihood of finding a guy like that. What is the ideal age? So I'm 27 and I would say I would want them to be older. So like my like range that I look for is 28 to 35. What would you want his income to be? I feel like this is going to sound bad. I feel like like 300,000. All right, let's get to it. Maria, baby. 28 to 35. I don't know if it's looking too good. Looks good, married men. Any race, we'll do average height of a dude, five eight, exclude obesity, and she wants a whopping three hundred k. Let's see how many cat bags she gets. Let's go. Zero point zero nine eight percent with a five out of five cat bags. <laughs> but is every guy they date like this? No. Making up ridiculous standards is her way of making herself feel like she's more attractive than she is. This is why you see the most ridiculous things coming out of the mouths of women who know that they could never lock down the type of man that they're talking about. They can delve into this magical fantasy world where they don't have to treat men like human beings but rather accessories that they have total control over. And you need to watch what people do, not what they say. Because women who say things like this have met, had sex with, and pursued relationships with men before who didn't buy them expensive meals on the first date. And if she's genuinely attracted to you, she's not going to put up roadblocks like this that only someone with low self-esteem would fall for. Someone who thinks very little of himself and tries to throw money at her in order to compensate. Now, I'm not saying that you can't take a woman out on a fancy date, but the first time you meet her, when you know absolutely nothing about her, that's the financial equivalent of love bombing. You don't tell someone you love them when you first met them, and so you don't act like you love someone before you even get to know them. And besides, plenty of women have admitted to doing something known as foodie calls. Going out on dates with men just to get a meal paid for. So it doesn't make sense to make this sort of investment before you've gotten to know someone. And I've had women make demands of me to try to pander to their princess complexes. And each time I gave in, it never went anywhere. But in more recent years, such women get blocked. And every single time I've had dating go well, it started from very simple conversations and spaces where we can both openly get to know each other. So yeah, this video is a short one, but I hope I've been able to quickly dismantle this ridiculousness for you. Please click like and subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you very much for listening.